Yeah, it's my great pleasure to introduce Manuel Luti, who will talk about joinings and uh, applications like um, the super singular elliptical. Exactly. Yes. Uh, Thank you very much for having me here. Thanks to the organizers and the original speaker for letting me talk. So I start uh, with a short discussion of what are choral packets. Uh, in the following, so there are a few complicated words, but bear with me. Um, and a bit of notation. So we let G be a semi-simple uh, Q algebraic group. Uh, we assume that it is linear, so it embeds into some SLN, and uh, it should be Q almost simple. Uh, the examples, the most crucial example for us will be PGL2 or SL2 or SLN. Um, good. And uh, so let A denote, I start with that right away, the ring of. Adels, that is the restricted product over all the places of Q, over all the completions of Q. Um, so the point is, it's, it's not really a direct product. We add some restriction, and in this, in this setting, using this restriction, this becomes a locally compact ring. This is the crucial part. And one sees that the, 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 the ring Q embeds diagonally into, e, uh, in, into this product by embedding it in each copy. And to, this is compatible with the assumption that it is the restricted product. Then, because this group is defined over Q, we can look at the Q points. And we can take the Adele points of this group, and this group, using the diagonal embedding, embeds in here, and under these assumptions, this is a lattice. This is a theorem by Borel and Arishchan. OK. And uh, so we use this once. We let rho be a representation, an algebraic representation of our algebraic group G over Q. And uh, so it's defined by polynomials with coefficients in Q. And we let, uh, let me not write SLN here, I wrote SLB. So B is a finite dimensional vector space over the rational numbers. And we fix ourselves a vector in V, and for interesting cases, we want it to be non zero. And I denote by TV the algebraic group which is given by the stabilizer of this vector. So this is suggested notation. In general, this is just an algebraic group defined over Q. Um, so, in particular, we can look at sets. We can look at the coset which at that point is not necessarily of finite volume or something, but we can map it into this quotient. And we can also do this, uh, we can also, in some, okay, so by just mapping it to the identity concept of this group. And 
given d in the Abel points of g, we let g t v be the set which is uh, the translated identity of set. spend some time on the example of the most crucial to us. Um, where also this notation will be appropriate. So we let D be a negative integer which is square free. And uh, we define a map, which I call ID, from the field obtained by, by, by joining the square root of D to Q into the 2 by 2 matrices over Q. And the map sends a point A plus square root D, so these are two rational numbers, to the matrix of the form A on the diagonal, and B, D here, and D here. Okay? And this gives, you, this gives you an embedding of this field in this ring. Um, so, this is, of course, the image The image of this embedding is given by the line defined by the identity matrix plus the line defined by VD, where the vector VD is this particular matrix. And now the group. PGL2 acts on this vector space, or more appropriately, on the uh, subspace of uh, traceless matrices in here by conjugation. So, given an element G in GL2, we can look at, and the vector V, which is a traceless matrix here, we can look at this vector, and this does not depend on the choice of the representative, of course. And in this, so here I changed the notation a bit, but let me denote by TD. Uh, the stabilizer integer to of the vector VD for this representation. Okay. So let me give uh, give you the following lemma. TV is a Q anisotropic torus. More precisely, as an algebraic group over, in this case, square root d, it is just the mat multiplicative group. And, uh, but not over Q. Okay, Q points are not. And uh, I wanted to quickly give you the argument. Okay. 
So the point is that, uh, that the determinant is a quadratic form, a ternary quadratic form on SL2. And uh, the orthogonal group with respect to this quadratic form is PGL2. And uh, therefore, the, the stabilizer we defined is the orthogonal group uh, for this quadratic form on the orthogonal complement, which is a two dimensional vector space. And uh, if you want, you can show. Uh, that the orthogonal complement consists of matrices of the form which have a minus a on the diagonal, so because it has to be traceless, and this bd here and minus b here. And if you take the determinant of such a matrix, you get minus a squared plus b squared d, and because d was negative, this is a negative definite quadratic form. In particular, if you plug in here R, you get something compact, and therefore its Q points cannot be double multiplicative. Uh, let me, so this, this implies, I said this is compact. And in particular, in this special case, it follows that there is some matrix in PGL to R such that, let me erase this, such that which conjugates this torus into PSO to R. The standard uh, SO. Good. Any questions so far? Remarks? Uh, I did not say what, so, okay. Uh, now, I can tell you what a toral packet is. Ah, oh, now I erased it. <laughs> uh, that was stupid. So, be because uh, the, this torus is Q and isotropic, uh, it's identity, the, the quotient of the Adel points by the rational points have finite volume. And uh, then this, um, this map we had before, the, this set here, is what we call a total packet. This can be generalized to more, to more cases, but these are the ones that interest us. And uh, this carries a finite, uh, a natural probability measure, which is given by the probability, by the push forward of the probability, the invariant probability measure on this quotient, on the, the, the map which sends it to that set. OK? Um, so in this case, what we had, we had this special set. I want to, because I tie it up afterwards. So we have this. 
subset of this finite volume quotient. And we this right hand side maps to the hyperbolic planes mod PSL to Z, which is obtained by taking the quotient with uh, all the completions of Z and then by PSO2. Okay, and the question is what is what is the set? So let me give it right down two facts. Uh, the first fact is that this this understanding will be helpful later. So I just stated here. If you look at this double quotient of this torus, then this is the same as the class group of the ring of integers of the field obtained by adjoining square root of phi, and because the is square free, I write it just like that. Um, this is a local global principle for fractional ideals or lattices in the field and uh, you have a local to global principle and these parameterize this precisely. Um, and the second fact is the image of so this, this matrix here depends on D and on several things but let's uh, sweep this under the rug. So the image of this total packet in here is uh, is the set which I call CMD, where CMD is the set of lattices. Uh, in C, which is homothetic over C, thetic to some fractional ideal in here. Okay, and this is the same as the set of elliptic curves over C, which is, uh, so, uh, okay, this is up to the homotity, uh, where E has complex multiplication by the ring, okay, uh, by the ring of integers in the <coughs> field Q's uh, joint square root D more the C isomorphisms. Okay. This is by the uniformization theorem for elliptic curves. This was already discussed by Andreas in a different talk earlier last week. It takes some time to set this up, and I want to talk about another part of the same project, actually focus on something else. So let's take this as a fact, I suggest. So let me, to tie up this section, let me state the following theorem, which is due to Duke. And uh, in a weaker version due to Linick and Skubenko. Um, and actually to, to several other people, but um, so this built some work of, I'm not entirely sure what precisely is needed for that, but the references I know say it's, uh, it relies on the theory of automorphic form, it's an effective equidistribution statement uh, which uses the theory of automorphic forms and is due to many, many big names in this area. Um, what I want to say is any weak star limit Uh, 
uh, of the natural measures on these toroidal packets uh, is invariant on the uh, the group the image of SL2A in PGL2A. So this is very imprecisely formulated, but uh, so the the measure maybe I should have said the uniform measure measures on uh, you're allowing the g infinity to escape to infinity in this you're allowing the g infinity to vary with d the g infinity varies with the d yes but it is chosen in a particular way it depends on d right it depends on d it depends on d let me make this explicit so otherwise the game becomes more tricky and there are several different cases you have to consider. It can distort it into some sort of... Uh, oh, no, it's uh, this particular... It's this particular G-infinity. Uh, okay. Okay, so let's leave it at that, but these total packets in some sense equidistribute. distribute. That's the, that's the bottom line of this. Good. Good. So in this version, as it is stated here, one can, under some congruence conditions, as uh, was done by Linnick and Skubenka, uh, for the CM points, but also for this uh, slightly more general version, you, one can give a dynamical argument if one assumes that the discriminants satisfy a uniform splitting condition. And this was certainly done by Andreas Wieser okay, but in a more general case. Um, good, so we get to the part two. Uh, not joinings, joinings. Good. So in what follows, we look at several groups at once. So G0 up to Gs are semi-simple linear Q groups and also Q almost simple. Purposes and we assume that they are tailwise non isogenous. Over Q. We also have a, we give ourselves again a sequence of uh, Q anisotropic tori. Uh, okay, let's say these groups are contained in some fixed SLM. And we assume that these tori are defined by polynomials uh, of a uniformly 
degree, uh, bandwidth degree, and have a zero. Ah, then we assume that we have for each k and for each n we have a homomorphism from this torus into the group gk which is also algebraic and defined by polynomials of degree less than n and with a zero dimensional And we also let G K of N be elements in the other points of the group G K. And we write uh, we write G N for the tuple. elements and here similarly we write i n for the two left embeddings. Okay. And uh, there's more setup for every n we let m n be a probability measure on the quotient of T and A by its rational points. Okay? Let me state the theorem, which is due to Manfred. I Siedler and Elon Lynch aus. And it appeared in 15, 2015 for the first time and was published last year, I think. The, 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 in accepted. So we assume the following. Uh, first, there exists a finite set of places of Q uh, independent of N such that for all N the group uh, of QS points of the Torus Tn has split rank at least two. So what does that mean? For example, you can find two distinct, uh, that's an option, you can find two distinct primes, Q1 and Q2, such that this embeds into this torus. And we also assume that all the measures Mn are invariant <laughs> under the split part. of probability measures uh, yeah. and they are all invariant not under the whole group but under the split part of this torus but under a higher rank group this is the crucial part and uh, we assume that for all k the toral packets uh, so here we have a bit of notation 
So we can project them. We take the image of the torus, we map it into the group GK, we hit it by the element GK and look at its the, the total packet it defines inside the quotient given by GK. Uh, so what we assume is that for all K, these total packets equidistribute In here, uh, there is some delicacy, so we assume that they actually distribute to a nearly invariant measure. And uh, an example of a nearly, what this means is that the limit measure, for example, uh, is invariant under the simply connected cover, the image of the simply connected cover, which in the case for PG of PGI2 would be PSL2, and it's the, the, the group generated by the unipotent elements. Let me continue. Or maybe something like this here. Let's think if you assume in one only less on the split part, then in two you also should just talk about the MN and not about Ah yes, 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 of course. The the push MN push forward. push forward. The push forward of the measures MN to these sets in here equidistribute to a nearly invariant measure. That's the... So what I had in mind when I wrote it down here now is uh, that you take the uniform measure, that you are honestly invariant on the... You are, that Mn is the measure on the quotient Tna mod Tnq. This is one example of such a measure. And then this would be what is... But under this uh, a generalization, I should assume that you take the push forward yeah. of these measures. Right, thanks. Uh, so then the push forward, forward of the measures Mn to the total packets uh, given by diagonally embedding this torus. So this is this is a subset of, of this product. Uh, the push forwards. So these equidistribute tribute to a nearly invariant measure. Okay? So if you combine this with uh, what we have here, you, you often expect that you have a distribution in each uh, factor if you do it properly. And uh, what they tell you is that even though this is a, the, this set is the diagonal embedding, it projects to each of these but it's far from being really a product set, right? It's, a, it's really the diagonal embedding in each group simultaneously. And uh, so the, these are, in the limit, they are disjoint. That's why this section is called joints. So let's see. Yes? Beyond the split part, what remains is compact. Right? I mean, the split part is not compact in this world. Yes. So, uh, how much do we gain by assuming we're just invariant by the split part? Right? Invariance by compact thing is usually practically free. We can get for free in some ways. Are there situations where you really. I have never used one. The, the, the examples I know are only. I don't know. But you have some freedom in other other times, right? Yes. 
So you could take half of the gas group or a small part of the gas group as long as the higher rank is promised within S. Oh, so, so, so I don't need the to be invariant in the split part of QS. Only of QS. Only of QS. No, no, no okay. that's, that's only the difference. Oh. Sorry. Yeah. Now I'm going a bit faster than I was expecting, so maybe or no. Let's uh, so I in the abstract I promised the uh, applications, but I'm a bit tempted to only give you one application uh, because it takes some time to set up. And maybe I give you other applications afterwards. So one relatively one of the earlier applications of that theorem was due to Manfred Einsiedler. Okay, that's the wrong idea. Due to Menyaka, Manfred Einsiedler, and Uri Shapira, in order to prove the simultaneous. Maybe let me give you this example. Uh, So a first application is, uh, as I said, you to Menyaka, Manfred Einsiedler, and Uri Shapira, with, who show that if you take, so um, if you let SD be the set of primitive integer vectors in Z3, which have a Euclidean norm squared equal to D. So you look at the radius D sphere and uh, take the primitive integer points on that and, and if you define for a vector V in they said, assume that it is non empty at that point. If you define lambda v to be the intersection of the integer lattice with the orthogonal complement of the vector v, which is again a lattice in the orthogonal complement because this is an integer vector. Um, so what we do is we take its C homotopy class, it's a lattice in, a, in C, <coughs> then as D goes to infinity, satisfying two conditions, one of them I don't know if by heart of. Oh. That was not stupid. I don't have the notes with me. So first of all, D should not be zero, four, and seven mod eight. Is that correct? Let's hope for this. Uh, so this condition means that this fear is non empty. This is the obvious condition you want to have points. And what you also have to assume is that minus d is a square mod two distinct, say, odd primes q1 and q2. Then the set of points uh, or the set of measures given by averaging over these uh, primitive points, the Dirac measures on the normalized <laughs> vector and the shape of the associated lattice 
is actually distributed in the weak star sense to the uniform measure on uh, the two sphere and the uniform measure on the space of lattices in C of 2C homotopy. So this is the this is notation for PGL2 R mod PGL2 Z mod PSL2 R. Okay? This is one application. There is a in some sense similar application by uh, many Akka, Manfred Einsiedler and Andreas Lisa, which if time remains I will formulate, which is more recent and uh, and very funny because it's not uh, so here they show that two closely related points become statistically independent in the limit. Right? You obviously construct this lattice from its vector lead, but somehow in the limit these two things are not correlated. Um, in the paper by Leniaka, Einziedler and Andreas Wiese, they construct five obviously related points and show that they are in the limit that statistically independent. But let me first, if time remains, we can do that. But let's do the elliptic curves thing, which is due to many Anka, myself, Philippe Michel, and Andreas Wieso. So in what follows, we fix points P1 to Ps distinct and odd and we also um, okay we also need a splitting condition so we add two different primes which I forgot to list initially and uh, let for k be bk be the unique quaternion algebra algebra over Q satisfying so it's it's the unique quaternion algebra over Q which is uh, ramified precisely at the prime PK that is if I tensor it with the field, say, QQ, then this is the split quaternion algebra, I, isomorphic to the 2 by 2 matrices over Q, or not a skew field, if and only if Q is not either infinity or this prime PK. Okay, and uh, we set GK to be the algebraic group, which is given by looking at the projectivized units in this quaternion algebra. Then the GK, um, let me write Q sigma, where sigma is uh, PK or in, is, uh, is a prime or infinity. This is compact. This is a compact group if and only if sigma is infinite or pk and in particular particular the gk are pairwise Non isogenous. I still have so this was an assumption here. Um, uh, we also let G zero be PGL two. 
So these are all what are called Q forms of PGL2. And uh, this is one particular Q form, and it's PGL2 is the one associated to the quaternion algebra, which is just the split one in all the places. Good. Um, so if we, if we fix a sequence, a sequence of negative fundamental discriminants uh, such that PK is inert in Q adjoint square root dn. That means that the principal ideal generated by PK is still the prime ideal in the ring of integers. Then, by uh, Hasse Minkowski, there exists for each K, we obtain an embedding into the quaternion algebra over Q. So I constructed initially one for a special quaternion algebra. Hasse Minkowski tells you that uh, dn is represented by the norm form on that quaternion algebra, so you can find it uh, and define an embedding in a similar fashion as we did before for more general quaternion algebras. We assume we assume that all those embeddings map the ring of integers in this field uh, into a fixed order in BK. So this is uh, OK, it's a subring, a unit of subring of this quaternion algebra, which is also a rank 4 Z model. It's an analogous concept to the concept of orders in a quadratic number. So when we assume that for all n they are fixed into one single order, this is not necessary. Much easier. Good. So now I have to introduce something a bit more abstract, but I do not really know the way around it. So in the joining theorem, we have this sequence of tori which could be embedded in all groups simultaneously. And so I need to define for you such a torus associated to n. And uh, so, in what follows, we consider, depending on n, the group, the multiplicative group, as a group over the field Q, a giant square root of the n, and let Tn be the group obtained by restricting the uh, restricting scalars to Q and then so this notation is a bit confusing but then we take the quotient by the Q group by the multiplicative Q group okay so this is we start with the multiplicative group over this quadratic extension we apply restriction of scalars. So this is essentially what you should think of. I wanted to avoid symbols, but if you write this as the field K, then this is essentially the group of units in this field. And this here is the group of units as an algebraic group over Q. Okay? And then I can take the quotient by, the, by just the units in Q in here. 
Okay, so I'm not sure how to get around this, but this gives me a sequence of tori defined over Q, which is uh, which are anisotropic, and these do not depend on the groups GK. Okay, but what is now the statement is the the these are this over the complex numbers. Excuse me. Right. If you look at the at the Archimedean place, you get yes. the complex numbers, which whose multiplicative group contains. Uh, in polar coordinates, the multiplicative group of the reals in a circle. Yes. If you divide by the reals, we're left with a circle. Yes. And that's exactly what we're doing here. Yes. Yes. So we have a quadratic extension of Q, we're dividing by Q cross, and what remains is an anisotropic one dimensional torus. It, which, in fact, those real points are going to be a circle because it's a quadratic imaginary. Okay. Thank you very much. That uh, I should have thought of that picture. Somehow I, I got afraid when I realized I should mention this and then did not. But uh, okay, so what we now have is uh, we, we have embeddings of these fields in the quaternion algebra, and the group GK is also taking the quotient by, by, the, by the center of the quaternion algebra. So we obtain embeddings which I denote by the same symbols of these tori in the groups GK. Um, but, so here is the theorem. theorem. Uh, so this is as stated above, many Aka, Mi, Philippe Michel, and Andreas Wieser. Still there. So, um, under all these assumptions, uh, assume, I did not make it clear, assume that the primes Q1 and Q2 split in these quadratic extensions. So this is the splitting condition. It's the same as this one. That's why I chose uniform notation for the Q1s and Q2s. It's everywhere the same thing. Um, let G and be a sequence of elements in the other points of GA, where this is just the product. Let, uh, for each K, KF, K denote the image of the unit in this order, so you take the units, you, you complete this order at all the finite places, and you take the, the, the units in this ring that you get, which is a, this here is a subset of uh, the units uh, of the quaternion algebra over the adults. And it's actually contained in the finite, you know, the finite places. That's G zero. G zero. G zero is PGL two. That's the particular one. So you get this subset of G K of A, and you look at it, at its projectivization. So this is a compact compact open subgroup of GK over the only the finite adults. And so now assume I give this notation but uh, The, what I want 
to say is that in each component you have equidistribution to an almost invariant measure. So you take these tori, you look at the toral packets in each component and you say it's discriminant in each, the, the smallest one should go to infinity as n goes to infinity. This is roughly, in this case, this is the volume of the orbit. So, so it's the statement that each of these uh, total packets equidistributes. Then, so assuming all that, then for all f, uh, for all compactly supported continuous functions, um, this product of quotients, which is invariant under the product of all those compact opens. Uh, the integral of f over the sequence of tori uh, where do I have the this converges to the integral with respect to the Hall measure on the full product. So what we have before the joining theorem said that you expect uh, the measure, the, the sequence of measures on these tori to converge to a measure which is invariant, which is nearly invariant. And now what we throw in in addition is that we have these uh, compact open subgroups. And if a function is invariant under these compact open subgroups, then the, any weak star limit of these measures agrees on such invariant functions with the uh, how measure on this quotient. Okay? So let me state how we apply this. And this is, this is the theorem as it is proven, but we apply it to elliptic curves. So let me draw you the diagrams and then we can discuss. Um, so, where do I do it? Let me do it. Oh, here. So, I wanted to stress very much uh, the dynamic part of this discussion as opposed to the algebraic part. stronger form of, of this theorem, but uh, for the application this is sufficient. So what we had before we have elliptic curves uh, defined over the algebraic closure of FPK, which are super singular. These are those where the endomorphism ring is isomorphic precisely to this quaternional, to an order in this quaternion algebra. And the statement here is that this is a this is a homogeneous space. So this is the quotient this is this double quotient. Because the complex multiplication curves are ideals in a number field, super singular curves are ideals in a quaternion algebra. There is an analogy which takes some time to develop. But. Then we have the points, the complex multiplication curves here, which were these orbits. And as pk is inert in q adjoint square root d, 
we had a map which took an element in here, a complex multiplication curve, in, uh, yeah, and reduced it to E mod PK, which is a super single curve in here. There exists an apparatus, an algebraic apparatus, to make this all work. And now there is a a collection of propositions and so on, which says that the following commutes. The following commutes. This is the most part of the how we do the application. So we take the complex multiplication curves, we map them into the space of lattices and the product of all those the singular curves and from here using this we map it into the product except uh, if k is equal to zero uh, let's call this star k and the other the other way we could go we do this Call this star n, and here we can map it into the space as we did before. So here we do the product-wise uh, reduction, and here we have identifications. And this thing commutes. We know that the push forward of the measures here equidistributes. This implies that the push forwards of the measures here equidistributes. This guy is a bunch of finite sets. If you equidistribute on finite sets and the me the map, this measure here has full support on these finite many points, you get surjectivity on the particular equidistribution. So this is the dynamical argument of, this, uh, of the proof of the theorem that you have subjective simultaneous reduction of complex multiplication curve for sufficiently large discriminants. Okay, so let's thank Marlon. <laughs> Further questions? So this order that you introduced is sort of an Abedere order, or is it a particular one? Because if it's an Abedere, it doesn't the theorem sort of automatically give you stronger versions? Uh, this one? Yeah. This is a, this is a maximal order? Maximal, okay. Yeah, yeah. So the, 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 this is part of the theorem, if you, of, of this reduction theory. You are only interested in maximal one. Yeah. But I think the theorem gives you immediately that the order is maximal. So, okay, yes, I should have meant. But the point is, this is a, this is a maximal order in your field. Mm -hmm. I was talking about fundamental discriminants. So this order always embeds into optimally into maximal order. You cannot find smaller ones. Each order is contained in a maximal one, so there was no necessity in this discussion to state it. We do not assume that the discriminants are fundamental. And for our theorem, we do not only restrict to this k. So you can also put here Eichel orders and so on, and the thing still works. What we use is that the norm is subjective. The quaternion norm restricted up to squares is subjected from these compact open subjects. But I restricted for, uh, I wanted to yeah. dis yeah. avoid yeah. discussion yeah. and the uh, conduct and so on. Yeah. So, so, what do you need is the class group to be the same? I need the class group? I mean, the, this idle or the quaternion thing is this, uh, the, cla the, the class group of. Of G is the same as the class of the field, oh, or the relevant class group. They are not the same. Or okay, let's do this later. Let's do yeah. this later. May, or maybe I don't understand your question. Is there another question? 
If not, then that's like one word. 